It's that you've been doing it on purpose. Well, no. I did <laughs> sound better, and then you started sounding better, and well, it really, it's... really bothered me. I... Oh, fine. Oh, that's what it is. It didn't bother you when you were sounding better. <laughs> oh, it did. It was just a different kind of bothering. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose that's okay. I've always looked better. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it like really balances the audio and the visual, you know, kind of thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, it does. Yes. So welcome to the Bill and Jason Show. I'm, I'm Bill Herman. Jason Jones. That's Wait, us. and that's Bill Herman. That's us over there, over here. Well, I don't know. Something Whatever. Knows around your ears. Hey, hi, hi, hey. I found an article. I want to hear. I want to read this to you. Tell me what you think of it. All, All right, right, I'm ready to listen. From Nashville, Tennessee, it says, saying that a lot of brides don't give enough thought to an important detail and end up regretting it later, local wedding planner Maureen Crompton suggested that her client, Allie Peterson, consider replacing the unsightly groom that she had chosen. Oh. Now, I know you have your heart set on this one, she said, but I feel it clashes with everything, said Crompton, adding that while she did not want the to pressure Peterson into making the change, she already had in mind another couple of options that she would be happy to present to her. Of course, there's probably a way to make this one work, she said, but considering the investment you're making, why take the chance? Is this talking, talking about her groom? Uh -huh. Like her I groom just said the word groom. Good? Yeah, groom. But it's I, I, I'm I in disbelief. Replacing the groom. <laughs> Everything is perfect about your wedding, except for the douchebag. I know, I know these things seem tedious and nitpicky now, but you're going to have photos for the rest of your <laughs> life. So you really want to make it right. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what you call really achieving the fairy tale wedding. Uh -huh. The first step, pick a really good looking groom. Yeah, I know. Doesn't matter if he's a jerk. <laughs> think of your pictures. I think that's. I mean, I, I, of course, this is a this is a, a an article from the Onion. Oh, okay. But it 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 it, it uh, you know they're 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 satirical. So I mean, they are so they're based to, on a kernel of truth. They are well, they are speaking <laughs> like a to conspiracy theory. They, they are speaking to how a wedding experts often can look at a bride or a groom and say, you know, I know you want a certain thing, but you're just not right. We can't, I can't create it this with this palette. Yeah, it's just, it wouldn't be perfect. And, and, and in no. my opinion, your wedding would be bad if you yeah. had everything you wanted. I'm thinking Disney, you're more honey boo boo. <laughs> you know, what, can we meet in the middle? What can, I don't know, what can we do? It is, it is, it's just, I, I think it does speak to that kernel of truth of those people that are unwilling to work with the client to give them what they want. At the same time, you know, it also, I also get that there are times that I'm going to look at my client and say, I think you're making a poor decision. You can have what you want, but I think you're making a poor decision. Well, is it give them what they want or is it being someone that helps them discover what they want? I mean, if you think back to all your clients that you've talked to, especially in your sales meetings, right? because like in my sales meetings is when actually the whole discovery process is not to get the sale, but the discovery process to figure out what they want. Because right. 99% of the time they go, what they want is a list of things they don't want. <laughs> and that's a natural human thing we all you know we all we're trained to go like okay i'll figure out what i want by telling you everything i don't want and right. hopefully i'll be left with what i want which right. usually you're not left with what you want you're left with what's left right i think that but that's a, that's a human thing that's not just a wedding thing no right yeah you go looking for a car you know you don't want one that's a lemon or oh, right, or I don't want I don't one that's that too means, big, but, right. and I don't want one that has too small of an engine. I don't want it to be underpowered, right. and I don't want it to be too loud. I want it to. I don't want it to attract police attention. Right. I want a DJ, but I don't want him to do uh, the chicken dance, and I don't want him to to bring out any props, and I don't want right. him to speak, or and do I'd like him to just hide and, right. and not do anything except for, in fact, play this list in order exactly because what I've seen in the past scares the crap out of me, yeah. uh, and mm -hmm. even though it scared the crap out of me, I'm still going to go out and hire what I think is awful. So I'm going to whittle away all the things that I think are awful well, until I have an iPod. Right. Well, and based on what they think is available. I mean, right. that's the one thing about like the entertainment experience. Mm -hmm. People take the entertainment experience. One of the things that's like they leave the workshop very excited, but they're going into a world where there is the consumers aren't shopping for what they do. Right. Because for the simple reason, not because they don't want it, it's because they don't know that it's available. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times have you had a consultation where they're like, I didn't know this was even available. Oh, oh just about every single time. Yeah. yeah. And so they so then the process becomes for them to discover that what you can create for them is the want that they didn't know they had. Absolutely. And then that, and I think that that's 
that's a, a thing not only within brides, but it is within people that, that DJ them at, at all. I mean, you get into DJing and you've seen what brides and grooms have seen. There are, there are lots of DJs out there, but very, a lot of them are the same. Sure. And uh, because they're the same and they see the same thing every time, it's like watching a movie you really love after mm-hmm. the 10th time. You're like, I don't know if I like that so much. So you've already got people out there doing that. You watch a movie 10 times and then you're like, I don't know if I like this so much. I'm not that kind of a person. (laughs) Who is, who does that? If you're willing to watch it 10 times, (laughs) you must love it. I want to see if I can get sick of this. (laughs) Oh, this is getting boring. Well, but you you know what I'm saying? If you see, but if it's a wedding, if it's something you have to see, in other words, at a wedding, you go to, to, the DJ is the DJ. You can't turn the channel. The the cake is the cake. You can't turn the channel. So if Mm -hmm. I've seen this cake a million times or I've seen this DJ a million times, then you start to think this is cake always tastes the same and DJs are always the same. And DJs are DJs. It's not fair, Mm -hmm. but uh, that is that is the perception. And and it's such it's such the perception that many young men and women who get into what we're doing go out and do that thing, that boxed thing that everybody thinks DJs are. And then they're creating the thing all over again because they're no different than what they've seen. And that's predictable. Right. So when you have like any profession or any industry, right. That's and, and, and same thing with photographers, same thing with any kind of art or, or rather any kind of business. They look at the past model and they just recreate it and then you put their name mm-hmm. on it or a new logo and say, well, this is why I'm different because it's me, which I get and mm-hmm. I agree with. But if you're, if, if you're serving the same exact cake with a different name, it's still the same exact cake, which is where we come at uh, from the entertainment experience. It's like, be, being able to look at what you do and, and and deconstruct it to create it with purpose mm-hmm. around who you really are. So it really is truly different as opposed to, okay, well, I've got gear and I've got music and, and I can play it loud and I know how to do the shoe game. So here I go. Right. Or just doing what you see. Like you look around and go, oh, that's what it is to, to be a DJ, mm-hmm. to act like a DJ, to be a DJ. That's what it is. And, and, and that not just from a negative point of view, like just, you know, getting up there and just playing music, uh, not just just, I mean, playing music is a really important part. Right. Okay. So I'm not minimizing that by, by saying that, but what I'm trying to speak to is when you just look at what you see most of the time, which is uh, like I know one uh, multi-op company from a couple that I talked to that actually asks in the in the planning process, they say, do you want a DJ that talks a lot? As and opposed to a DJ that doesn't talk much at all. Or an iPod. I'm and honestly, suppose. with that question, I don't know any. I I am a DJ. Yeah. I like DJs. I yeah. think DJs are cool. Right. And if given the question, do you want a DJ that talks a lot? I would, I would lean more towards no than I would yes, not right. knowing what the DJ is going to talk about. Right, because it's not about that he talks a it's lot. Not it's not that, about the talking. Right, because I, I I know you and I we in our performances talk way more than other DJs and yeah. never have anybody go, man, I wish you would shut up. Yeah. Gosh, this guy goes on and on and on mm-hmm. because it, it has purpose. It, it has, there's, there's something behind, a motive behind it other than I'm doing a thing. Right. So, um, so, so I, yeah. And, but, but that speaks to like what people, most of consumers are accustomed well, to. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, going back to our original, uh, the original idea of this whole little rant we went at, on it is that, that the consumers think it's a certain thing, and it's so systemic that it that DJs think it's a certain thing as well. Mm-hmm. There's a very there's a very small uh, 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 subset of people in the DJ world who have realized that it can be something else, and that they can create something new, un- un- uniquely unique, and then they go out and do that. Now, does everybody do that? No. There's still that there's still that grand amount of people that have just dis- decided that well, I'm going to be in the DJ business, so I have gear, and I've got I know how it goes, and this is the music that works, and we all do the same. thing. Thing, but I've got a different logo mm-hmm. and I've got a different face and I might not annoy you. So you should hire, hire me, which is, that's the way it is. That's just the way it works. Uh, my cake might be a little tastier or look a little prettier. My photography will be this as opposed to that. So, um, it's, 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 it's understanding that it is, it, it, it is, and can be as unique as who you, who you say it is yeah. as opposed to just kind of, Oh, well, I, I am what I am. And what do you, what do you want from me? Well, that's even that should be even more powerful. You are what you are. That's the one thing that makes mm-hmm. you completely unique. Now, how do you take that and and build it into something that is something that they don't know what they want? Well, like that's, what we were talking about. That's the whole why of the entertainment experience. Right. I mean, that was that's what's been that's what has had us continue to do it because the whole purpose of it is to give people the tools to create something original, to create something innovative so that you know, uh, our dream, I believe, is that that 
along with the pages on the the newest dresses coming out and the latest <laughs> cakes decorating and and all that sort of thing is the latest in entertainment and that entertainment is being generated and created and innovated inside the inter- the DJ industry so it's not just when especially when it comes to weddings mm-hmm. it's not just well but I'm a DJ and I do what a DJ does it's mm-hmm. like well what if you're a wedding entertainer what do you do if you're a wed- how are you creating entertainment right. as a wedding entertainer and 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 the key operative word is creating that as a collaborative kind mm-hmm. of thing and there's all kinds of different ways to do that and there's and it has and the more and and if you do what steve jobs did which was he said okay this is how people like to use computers right they want it to be easy mm-hmm. they want it to be at their fingertips they want to be able to figure it out without thinking about it very much right. and be really accessible and handy why don't we make the iphone and nobody asked steve jobs hey when are you going to make the iphone <laughs> nobody did right Right, and then he went like, "What do you think of this? Here's an iPhone." And everybody's like, "iPhone," <laughs> and he's like, "Got sick, fifty-five percent of the whole phone market, right? Cell phone market, because he spoke to what people wanted. Didn't didn't say, tell me what you want me to do. Well, I'll make you happy.' Mm-hmm. They don't know what you want them to do. I can tell you what they want you to do. Right. So right, and exactly, and one of the, one of the reasons that we do. Uh, what we do with the entertainment experience is that the only thing that DJs have ever had to be able to make themselves different in the past Mm -hmm. is, oh, a new light. Ooh, a new controller. Look, computers. Wow, these speakers are amazing. You know, that's the only way we've had to go out and say, okay, I need to take my business to another place, to another level. A lot of people like using the word level. I don't know that I, I agree with levels, but it's more, it's just taking yourself down another path to create something new to differentiate to give yourself, yourself give, give your client yeah. something excited to look at where as what we found was there's a place that you can go creatively that mm-hmm. regardless of your entertainment background regardless of whether or not you want to be an entertainer or not there are these avenues you can go to that have very little to do with the equipment that you buy. Because oh, yeah. everybody can get this equipment, but only you can right. create the collaboration in your own brain mm-hmm. around the creativity to actually make yourself interesting and take yourself to a new place, not necessarily a new level, mm-hmm. but to a new place that will take you to what you consider that new level. That's what's so exciting about this and the reason why we even still do it. Mm-hmm. No, exactly. Well, I mean, just think about Jason Janai, right? So, I mean, you and I are really... Yeah, he like, was nothing until he met us. Exactly. Man, I was, okay. well, Thank, he should be calling us and thanking us every day. Jason, I'm expecting my phone call. I was going to take a little longer way to say that, but, you know, <laughs> get right to the point. Why not? Um, but no, like, you know, like how, our approach is much more story and MC oriented and right. all that sort of thing. Right. Although, you know, we play music and we do a fair job. Mm-hmm. I would say we're like party DJs, you know, play the hits, play the hits, play the ones people want to hear. Yeah, kind we're of not thing. that. And you listen, but then you listen to like the art that Jason Janai creates right. when he's mixing, which is a whole whole nother appeal it's like a whole new appeal it's like i you know listening to him play at mobile beat i'm like i want to get married again and have him do that at my wedding you right know what i mean just because of the magic that he can do in all kinds of different genres but i would say that he also takes the same approach oh right? absolutely words are no words he looks at what he's going to do where he's going to do it who he's going to do it for, and why all those things are important, and then where he wants to go and why he wants to go there. And from that, creates that story with the mixes and the creation mm-hmm. of the dance that he does. And it is unique in its own damn self. Well, and he's always watching the audience. Yeah. Like, how can I enhance this moment? How can I enhance this moment? I mean, even Mike Walter pointed this out in his article mm-hmm. when he was talking about Jason, how uh, Jason had heard Carr talk about the Ramones in his lead-up. To at, Penn Jillette's to Penn speech at and the Mobile he, Beach show. He introduced Penn Jillette, and while he was doing that, of course, you know, Mike, every DJ, is, what's the DJ doing while right. this is happening? Yeah, because he's hardly and, paying attention. He says, ooh, look at the needle. Right. <laughs> And so uh, Jason Sorry, wasn't Mike. back there like waiting to push the button <laughs> no. of what he already prepared. He was listening and he's like, oh, the Ramones. So he's searching, puts in the Ramones. And then what is As Penn they say, ladies to? and gentlemen, Penn Gillette, you've got. I want to be sedated. Be sedated yeah. Which then then Penn like starts Dancing to tell a story. And singing to yeah. it. He was And great. then tells a story that's like really funny and creates this whole thing out of the moment. That is what is magical about mm. being a DJ without even saying anything. Right. To be able to like put in the perfect song in the perfect moment at the perfect right. And that's just what he's like a master of. So there's well, so many different ways to approach it. that speaks to everything it. except for his equipment. That speaks to how he's listening, how he's being, the purpose he's put into what he's doing and why he's doing it there. So if because of that, he was in a place where he could actually hear that. Yeah. I'm sure mm-hmm. that, that, that no one in the room went, oh, we better put the Ramones on until they went, oh my God. 
gosh, the Ramones. I would have done that too. They might have, they might not have, but he was so into the moment. Right. He was doing exactly mm-hmm. as he should have done as any performer in the moment, in the listening. He wasn't talking. Yeah, he was Carl Hagerman really present. had the center, mm-hmm. and, and Penn Jillette was about to take it, but just because he was on stage and not doing anything, it was, it was one of the things I speak to in the workshop around a story we tell about um, Michael Caine. Same thing. Just because you're standing there doesn't mean you're not doing something. Right. It isn't, it, you're not, you're, you're still part you're of what's still going in the on. Scene. And because of it, he happening. created a moment in a four day conference that people are still talking about. Yeah. Incredible. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. You want to talk about something else? No, not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then let's wrap up the show. All right. Well, thanks again for being a part of the Bill and Jason show. And if you want to know more about what we do, you can certainly go to our Facebook page. You can check us out on Twitter. Uh, I, I love getting tweeted. I, I've said that a million times. Our it's website, BillAndJasonShow.com. And uh, tell another 10 people so we can have another 10 listeners, which should probably bring us up to, what, 40? Yeah, get all share happy with Honestly, the link. Honestly, that would be that would really be, awesome. That would be really great. Thanks again for tuning in this week. We'll talk to you again <gasps> next week. Bye. Broadcasting from high atop planet Earth at a rate of 96 kilobytes sample per second over the interweb in an effort to stop glorifying being busy. This has been an entertainment experience production. <laughs>